Hey there, so today I want to take apart the Gen Machine Mini PC that we took a look at before that was the cheapest Ryzen Mini PC that you can find on Amazon at only $150, but it has a Ryzen 7 2700U, an APU that is about a half decade old. But the worst aspect of it was actually the fact that in this casing here that you see here, the cooling system is an absolute disaster. If you take a look at the top here, you can see through the transparent plastic the fan underneath and there is just no cooling system whatsoever for this thing it just doesn't seem to be able to breathe by the looks of it it's supposed to try to just suck in air i guess from the side vents here but i'm not really sure how that's supposed to function while it's running i can't really feel much air moving through these and with this plastic cover on the top it just doesn't really seem like it's going to be able to breathe at all so i'm going to see how easy it is to take the board in there out of here hopefully they didn't use any kind of glue or anything like that if it's all just screws we should have an easy time taking this thing out if we actually open up the system here you can see that we have a very simple board on here there's really not much to it and there are some visible screws i think it's just going to be four screws that we need to take out there are some screws there in the middle but i don't think that they're really attached to anything if we take out these four we should be able to take it out so let's see if that's the case all right, so that's all four of them out so let's see if the board feels loose i could already tell that it's definitely moving yeah, yeah you can kind of see a gap forming there you can see there in the ethernet board you can see a gap so it's definitely coming out i don't i don't feel any glue or anything holding it down so i think we could actually just force this thing Thing out oh yeah yeah this thing is completely out it, it is attached to something it seems to be the wireless antennas they're kind of just strapped onto there onto the case so i'm just gonna unscrew the ssd and kind of just get underneath there and unplug those well, all right, now that we have those out, we have the board here, and it is a very simple board. It was extremely easy to get out, and here we can actually see that cooling system, specifically the fan and the heat sink, and taking a look at it, it, uh, it really, really becomes obvious why this thing was struggling. There was just nowhere really for the air to really intake or get exhausted. I mean, in general, it's not exactly an impressive cooling system. It's a very simple, small fan, and the heatsink in particular is extremely tiny and seems to just be aluminum. But in this specific case itself, it just seems like it can't breathe at all, and it becomes very obvious as soon as you turn it on. That's one of the things that I'm going to be the most curious to see. I want to see how this thing is going to handle just being idle, because for an 8-watt CPU, the heat and the noise that it made is ridiculous. And again, the cooling system doesn't look impressive at all it really isn't but i think it should be able to at least at idle be quiet so let's get this thing plugged in so here i have it set up on the desk and everything's plugged in we have the motherboard keyboard mouse all hooked up to a monitor here and i am running cinebench r23 on there just to see what kind of temperatures we can get at and initially already it's running far far cooler than it was before when running Cinebench R23, but one of the biggest differences is the fact that as I booted it up and it loaded up into Windows, it wasn't screeching at me from the very beginning. So the fan is actually able to breathe more, and because of that, it's not spinning up as high as it was before since the temperature was just getting ridiculous. The fan was effectively not doing anything and trying really, really hard and failing miserably to cool it okay so i just got done letting this thing run on cinebench r23 for a while and i also loaded up into a few games just to see how it all went so i did some testing just to see what kind of temperature and noise we're looking at here after leaving cinebench running for 30 minutes the maximum temperature that we did end up reaching was 92 degrees so it definitely was still getting hot and that's not too surprising since the cooling system does not seem to be all that great in general but it definitely took far longer for the system to reach those peak temperatures than it did when it was in its original case. In terms of gaming, I sat down and played Left 4 Dead 2 on here for about an hour and a half. I figured if I was going to sit down and actually play a game, it might as well be something that ran well on here. I mean, considering the age of the APU and just how limited its TDP was, the selection of games 
that would be easy to install and also play with the controller. It was a, a little limited. But I've been actually playing a lot of Left 4 Dead 2 recently anyway, so it was really perfect. I've been playing through a lot of modded lobbies, though here I'm just playing single player. But it is on a custom map, and the performance is decent enough. It wasn't absolutely awful, though you'll see that the performance does drop down a little bit. You can, of course, adjust the graphics settings. I kind of just left them at high, though I did turn off anti-aliasing. But the most impressive thing was the fact that the system was noticeably cool. What you're seeing here is gameplay of me about an hour and 10 minutes in. And the temperatures still were, were not really exceeding past the low to mid 60s. Now, this isn't a game that is extremely demanding on the CPU and the GPU by any means. Though the GPU is at 100% load pretty much all the time. The CPU on the other hand isn't really doing all that much work as you can see by its pretty low utilization. But that's going to be the vast majority of games that you actually play on here anyway. So in terms of that it's actually doing pretty well. Though the system itself is still pretty noisy. Once the fan just ramps up it's just going to inherently make a lot of noise but the benefit of that noise at least is the fact that the system is running pretty cool and this makes this a lot more interesting of a situation i'm kind of coming out of this a little surprised I didn't think that I was going to be as impressed as I was because when I really think about it, I got a single board computer here with the RAM and SSD included. So the entire package that you need for a single board computer setup to get up and running for $150. And when you consider the cost of most single board computers that are ARM or x86 based and the level of performance that they come with, this actually doesn't seem all that bad. One of the biggest issues is the fact that it does kind of use a lot of power from the wall relative to its performance just due to its age at this point but in terms of raw performance it's still clearing pretty much everything in this price class and while in this plastic awful enclosure it was a disaster it's a lot different once you have the bare board there if you have a project where you need this kind of performance this board is actually really impressive and for the case itself that you're paying for here considering the quality i don't think you were really getting upcharged all that much for its existence again at 150 dollars if you just look at this as something where you're just getting the board i mean you saw how easy it was to get out you could realistically actually use this and not feel like you're getting ripped off i have wished for a long time now that at least some oem or someone would start to put older ryzen cpus that are probably cheap to get a hold of and just start throwing them on cheap single board computers just give me the single board let me 3d print a case for it hell even give out the dimensions that are needed for the cooling so that people could just custom design their own cooling systems for it you know you could get crazy with it but i wish someone would just do that so we could just build our own mini pcs in what whatever fashion that we really want. But I mean, if you need a mini PC single board computer, this is actually kind of looking like a pretty attractive option and that's kind of surprising. But anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one.